the state of the API. So what the heck are we talking about when we talk about the state of the API report? Well, we did a huge survey and we surveyed lots, and I mean lots of folks all around the industry to really understand who is working with APIs, how they're getting their work done, and where do they see the industry going? And we took all of that information and compiled it into this really big, meaty report. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to dig into that. Um, and, you know, kind of from that, there's some pretty, you know, kind of direct uh, predictions on where we see the industry going. But there are some interesting kind of uh, correlations and insights we can glean out of it. So we'll be digging into that today, too. Uh, so, yeah. So, you know, kind of uh, looking at today's agenda, I'm going to introduce uh, the report and uh, obviously myself, we've already done that. And thanks to, to folks who are joining this, uh, who may not be joining us live, but watching this on YouTube. So, uh, you know, kind of we're going to introduce the report. We're going to look a little bit at who's working with API. So, you know, kind of who completed the survey. Uh, we're going to talk about the rise of API first. Something you heard a lot today uh, from Ankit uh, this morning was about uh, kind of building an API first organization. So we're going to take a look at what uh, the industry sees around that. Uh, we're also going to dig deep into some obstacles to producing APIs as well as the obstacles to consuming APIs and what this, that tells us about the future. We're going to talk a little bit about the most popular tech uh, kind of around the industry. And then finally, we're going to close with, uh, you know, what we see for the future of APIs in terms of, uh, you know, how the, how the industry is growing. All right. So over 13,500 API industry professionals completed this survey. Uh, and that's what we based the report on. So what that means is this is the largest and most comprehensive survey and report in the industry. You know, there's been some other, you know, kind of really interesting reports, you know, recommend reading them all. Of course, I'm a bit biased, but, uh, but you know, all of them, you know, don't quite have the robustness of our uh, question set, as well as the, um, as well as just the number of survey responses. So we are insanely grateful to our community and to others in the industry for taking the time because it was a, a pretty meaty survey. So let's talk about who works with APIs. Now, for some of you, this is going to seem kind of obvious. For others, it might be a bit of a surprise. But APIs have already expanded well beyond the realm of software engineers. And uh, kind of, you know, what we found is that developers only account for about half of those surveys. So only about half of those 13,500 folks were actually some type of developer. Uh, by the way, biggest chunk of folks uh, full stack developers coming in at 29% of survey responses. That was followed by back end developers, front end, and then we saw a small sliver of mobile developers. But you know, when you dig into that non developers uh, segment, gosh, you know, we saw really an interesting, you know, just breadth of individuals represented. Everything from you know folks you might expect like technical architects and product managers. But, you know, a lot of managers, a lot of directors, a lot of C-suite, in fact, almost one in 10 of folks who took the survey were actually in some type of management role. So APIs, is, you know, they're not just for developers anymore was, uh, you know, something that we've seen. It's really, you know, made its way all the way through management into the C-suite. So we also saw, you know, kind of a number of other folks, you know, folks who don't have a development background at all including even some marketers, uh, sales engineers, solutions engineers, just, you know, kind of uh, just really, really ran the gamut. And so we came out with this, you know, kind of what we found uh, from the data was really, you know, about half developers, half non-developers. So let's talk about the rise of API first. And you've heard, you know, again, uh, Ankit talk a little bit this morning about, you know, building an API first organization. And certainly, you know, we did the survey towards the second half of 2020. And what we realized is while we say API first a lot, we hear API first a lot, especially from industry analysts and, you know, other prognosticators about the future of APIs. There's not, you know, we're, we started realizing like we haven't seen a big survey kind of come out and figure out, well, what do people mean when they say API first? So we put together a few definitions. And we also gave folks the option to say, I'm not sure. So here's the good news. 
The good news is, Folks, by and large, report that they know what API first means to them. In fact, 87% said, hey, I know what API first means, and 13% said, I'm not sure. So, so that's good. Uh, what's a little bit tougher is there's not yet a solid consensus around what API first means to different folks. So, uh, you know, we asked, we put together kind of three definitions, if you will, defining and designing APIs in schema before beginning development developing APIs before developing the applications or integrations that rely on those APIs, and then finally defining business requirements before defining and designing APIs. And uh, you know, we saw you know, kind of uh, almost uh, kind of two centers come together here, you know, being defining and designing APIs before beginning development, as well as developing APIs before beginning the uh, developing of applications or integrations. Those kind of like became the two largest chunks so the other thing that we did is we, we took a look and we said, hey, who, you know, look at you, uh, you know, kind of your own workflow processes, your team, your organization. How well would you say that you are embracing the concept of API first? And, and I'll be honest, we kind of uh, were a little bit worried about this question. We were wondering if uh, you know, folks, folks felt like they were further back in the pack, but actually over 60% of folks or more said that they were either somewhat API first or fully API first. So that's really good news. So, you know, it's certainly, you know, kind of a continuation of what Abhinav shared in uh, the keynote yesterday morning, right? Uh, we see this, you know, groundswell and, and charge towards embracing an API first philosophy. Now, here's what's uh, really interesting and something that we did uh, in this report, and I'll touch on a little bit in today's presentation, but highly recommend reading the whole report. We said, all right, if you ranked yourself a seven or better, you know, you're really kind of more mature along that API first scale. Here's what we're going to do. You know, we're going to take a look at their data and say, what can these API first leaders, the, you know, those who are really, you know, doing a good job of embracing an API first philosophy, what can their data and their information tell us about the industry as a whole? And we've called that out throughout the report and a little bit in what we talked about today. So kind of skipping back, what's really interesting, those API first leaders were significantly, and I mean significantly, more likely to say that defining and designing APIs and schema before beginning development is what API first means to them. So I have a feeling we'll see, you know, kind of the industry start to coalesce, if you will, around that definition going forward. All right. So another thing I said we talked about, what's so hard about producing APIs? And we had a clear winner in this for this question. Overwhelmingly, lack of time is the number one obstacle to producing APIs, cited by more folks than any other uh, situation. So let's look at the data. So lack of time was actually cited by 52.3 percent of folks they said you know number one obstacle to producing apis lack of time and then kind of in a pretty distant if you will second and so on place uh we've got lack of knowledge lack of people complexity lack of documentation stakeholder prioritization lack of budget Stakeholder expectations unclear, or I think we've all been in this situation at some point, you know, unrealistic stakeholder expectations, uh, leadership buy-in, lack of tools, and team buy-in. So, and I'll talk about some of those later points and, you know, kind of the good news out of that. But, you know, overwhelmingly, the, you know, lack of time was the, is the biggest obstacle, according to folks who, you know, took the survey. That's what's standing in their way. So we took a step back and said, okay, what does this tell us about the future of APIs? And one insight we can take away is that the people, the processes, and the platforms that help solve for this number one obstacle, the lack of time, will be the most successful people, processes, and platforms going into the future. So, okay, sounds great. Let, let's kind of dig into that statement a little bit more, right? So sure, developers who code faster and uh, kind of get over this uh, hurdle of lack of time uh, can, you know, obviously, you know, they'll be more successful, but really it's much more nuanced than that. If you look at your technical architects and your product managers who find elegant solutions, 
you know, they're going to be more successful, you know, if they can do things on, you know, at the very beginning of projects and kind of in managing projects to reduce that development time required. You know, organizations that streamline their processes, you know, including those who run development in parallel, where the front end and back end engineers are uh, working together in concert and at the same time, those are going to be more successful. And then, you know, uh, in uh, the keynote this morning, you know, talked a lot about uh, our own journey towards this API first, uh, you know, building an API first organization and how we structure our organization. Those processes and things in place helped us be, you know, kind of more successful. But, you know, also the platforms and tools, and we take this to heart as well, you know, the platforms and tools that help reduce the amount of time required to develop, you know, whether it's collaborating together, uh, better, faster, forking, merging, commenting, just, you know, kind of being able to see uh, the same, uh, you know, status of things within Postman. I mean, those, you know, we took that to heart and platforms that help reduce the development time will be the ones who succeed. So let me flip this on a little bit. Let's see what's not an obstacle, at least compared to some of these other uh, scenarios. Leadership buy-in is almost at the bottom of the pack. So what that means is that leaders by and large are bought in uh, to, you know, uh, producing APIs uh, in some cases, you know, all the way already on their journey towards an API first philosophy. Leaders are by and large are bought in. And part of that's because, you know, we even see they're already in and working with APIs, even at the uh, management and C-suite level. So that is really, really good news because that's one obstacle many of us don't have. All right, so let's flip gears. Let's talk about consuming APIs. What's so hard about consuming APIs? Again, we had a clear leader, and the number one issue is lack of documentation. That is the number one obstacle to consuming APIs. Uh, by the way, if you just search for, uh, you know, kind of API documentation memes, you'll find a million. I, I was almost cry laughing <laughs> by the end. Uh, but uh, some of them, not necessarily uh, something I would want to put in a presentation, but, you know, have fun with that search. So, you know, kind of this sums it up. These API docs are too detailed, said no one ever. And that's really true. And that's what the, you know, that aligns very much with the data. So, you know, lack of documentation was cited by 54.3% of folks. They said that is the number one obstacle to consuming APIs. And that is followed by lack of knowledge, complexity, lack of time, lack of budget, lack of people, leadership buy-in, stakeholder prioritization, team buy-in, lack of tools, and stakeholder expectations, you know, unrealistic or unclear. So, you know, what that tells us again about the future of APIs are the folks who can solve the people, the processes, the platforms that can solve for that documentation issue are the ones who are gonna be the most successful going into the future. And, you know, you think about that, we've had a ton of good, great sessions uh, over, you know, yesterday and today around developer experience. You know, I, I think it's almost oversimplifying it a bit to talk about it, you know, in terms of lack of documentation. But that's kind of the easiest way to grab this survey data. But, um, you know, folks, anybody who can shorten that learning curve for API consumers will be far more successful than those who cannot shorten that learning curve. And think about that from a people perspective, you know, your tech writers, uh, developers who are having to write documentation, but then also think about it from a processes and platform perspective, you know, where you have uh, processes in place in your organization to make sure your APIs are well documented, you know, not just for public, but internal usage too. I mean, this is a huge hurdle for folks using internal APIs as well. And then of course, platforms, and that's, you know, part of, you know, for our own uh, kind of insight here at Postman, you know, part of the emphasis behind public workspaces is yes, it's about collaboration. Yes, it's about making easier to produce APIs, but it's also an awful lot about uh, kind of overcoming this lack of documentation obstacle to consuming APIs. All right, switching gear again, I do want to kind of talk just real briefly about a few uh, kind of popular architectural styles. So we asked, hey, what's the most uh, popular architectural style? And sweeping majority of respondents said that REST <laughs> was uh, their favorite and they were most familiar and, and used REST on a regular basis. So 93.4%, in fact. Now, 
you can see there's a, you know, this is another scenario where we have a clear winner, if you will, but there's some kind of interesting insights uh, after rest. So webhooks used by about a third at 33.4% of folks. So uh, for those who are a little bit newer to the industry, you may not have bumped into this yet. For uh, veterans, obviously, you know this very well, simple object access protocol. You know, that's still hanging on pretty gosh darn strong, and it's got a solid representation, especially in some enterprise environments. Uh, that's coming in right again at a third, about 33.2%. Uh, uh, GraphQL, so graph query language, you know, we're starting to see that rise up currently at 22.5% of folks. WebSockets uh, representing almost a quarter at 22.4%. So what's interesting is you kind of have this uh, clear divide around some of these architectural styles and then uh, a pretty big gap and uh, the remainder are all coming in at 7% or less. Some of these on their way up, some of them <laughs> on their way out and have been on their way out for a long time. So GRPC, for those not familiar, uh, it's developed by Google. The RPC stands for Remote Procedure uh, Call. We've got server sent events certainly made a showing, uh, AMQP, advanced messaging queuing protocol, MQTT, uh, message queuing telemetry transport, and then good old EDI, uh, electronic data interchange. By the way, in case you weren't uh, aware, that has been around since the 1970s. <laughs> so I even remember seeing uh, demos. We won't say how long ago, but I mentioned I've got over 20 years of experience. It was at the front end <laughs> of that experience. So um, by the way, what was kind of interesting, even with that very clear winner around breast, at least uh, you know what we found in the data, that actually uh, folks with six or more years of API development experience we're even more likely to use REST than those with zero to five years of experience. So kind of another interesting takeaway. All right, let's talk about the most popular, uh, excuse me, specifications. So another clear winner situation here, JSON schema was by far the most popular and in use in, term, in 2020, coming in at three quarters, right, at 75.6%. Uh, that was followed by Swagger 2.0, coming in at 43.9%, so not quite a half, but uh, kind of up there. And then OpenAPI 3.0 at 27.8%. Again, we kind of did the survey at the end of 2020, or second half of 2020, so obviously we've had some, uh, you know, 3.1 is out now. But, uh, and again, for those who may not be as familiar, the latest version of the OpenAPI open specification was actually a uh, kind of the first major release, if you will since uh, Swagger 2.0. So Swagger 2.0 became, you know, a lot of that base became, and uh, you know, after it was donated and renamed from Swagger to OpenAPI, became OpenAPI 3.0. We also saw GraphQL kind of starting to rise up again at 22.5% around specifications. And then finally, all of these are kind of 6% or less, less coming in with uh, protocol buffers, RAML, async API, Avro, API Blueprint, and Thrift. By the way, async API, we're you know talking again about the future of APIs. Uh, we really see that uh, kind of rising up, and I highly encourage you if you haven't you know already seen the news or read some of it, look at uh, you know Postman uh, not too long ago partnered with a async API and expect big things there. All right, so let's see here, uh, future of APIs. So we asked folks, what are you most excited about for the future of APIs? And the number one answer, two years in a row, was microservices. Now in uh, 20, uh, in late 2020, we also heard Kubernetes, containers, serverless architecture, GraphQL, HTTP2, event-driven, PubSub, and service mesh. By the way, super interesting point. Containers was number two in 2019. It actually kind of fell back to number three uh, in 2020. So kind of an interesting shift there in terms of what folks are most excited about. All right. So let's talk about API investments. And for me, this is kind of one of the coolest, biggest, most awesome takeaways from this study. API investments are going to stay strong. The future is very bright. So if you are new to APIs, welcome. You are in the right place. If you are a business leader in your organization, awesome. Glad you're here getting a deeper understanding 
around APIs because this is certainly uh, you know where we see the industry headed. And uh, for those who've already been here for you know kind of been in the industry for a long time, man, you're really smart. <laughs> you really you really 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 knew came in ahead of the curve and, and knew to be in the right place. So let's see what the data tells us. Now bear in mind, looking at the second half of 2020. Uh, obviously, we're in a pandemic now. Uh, heart goes out to everybody who's been impacted by the pandemic. Uh, you know, certainly, you know, it's been a, a really, really, really tough economy and situation. But despite that terrible global recession, uh, pandemic, you know, slowdown in a lot of businesses, actually, APIs are bucking the trend. You know, they are forging their own path. You know, and the industry is uh, overwhelmingly either investing, you know, folks are investing heavily in APIs, or they're holding the course while they're cutting other programs. Even though, you know, you know, some organizations, their revenue is on a downswing, they're still holding course on their investment in APIs. In fact, almost half of folks, 45.7%, say that their organizations will spend more time and more resources on APIs than before, you know, in the next 12 months compared to the prior 12 months. Meanwhile, uh, you know, we've got that, you know, some folks, uh, you know, kind of in organizations, maybe a little bit more turmoil there or turbulence uh, dealing with the pandemic. Actually, they're still coming in at about a third. Uh, they, were, they are keeping their investment level in terms of time and resources spent on APIs. And then a little less than 4%, their organizations will spend less time and resources on APIs. So that is really, really good news, especially given the economic climate. All right, so, oh, it looks like we will have just a couple minutes for questions, but before uh, I open it up, and I might ask Ian to uh, help me out with reading some of those questions. So uh, get the entire report at www.postman.com slash state dash of dash API. By the way, if you don't feel like writing all that down, just Google state of API or state of the API. We should be the first uh, response listed. So go there, read the whole report. I only scratched on a tiny, tiny surface uh, of kind of what's involved in that report. So highly, highly recommended. And I'm sure we'll be doing the report again here as we uh, make our way into 2021. You know, certainly, uh, you know, welcome thoughts, feedback. Is there something that you want, once you read the report, is there something that you want to know that you don't know? Uh, you know, we're always, we're always improving things here at Postman. So, uh, always looking to gain, gain more insights. All right. So questions, uh, just real quick. So I am planning to be in the booth, the Postman booth a little bit later today. So come visit me there. You are always welcome to email me. My email is very easy. It is Rebecca at postman.com. And, uh, gosh, let me see here. What else? Um, I think that's about it. Ian. I think we've got some questions. Maybe you want to hit me with them. Yeah, I do. So first of all, we uh, pasted the link to the State of the API report into the chat. So Sharath already uh, shared that. First question, uh, in quotes, lack of documentation. So does that mean missing completely, incomplete, both? Um, they're trying to understand the must-haves in API docs. Um, I did share a blog post to Postman's uh, good documentation checklist, but Rebecca would love uh, to hear more of your thoughts on that. Yeah, so phenomenal question. So lack of documentation actually kind of takes two flavors. In some cases, it's lacking altogether. In other cases, the documentation itself is lacking. So there is some documentation there, but the thing that you want to know, it's not clear and obvious from kind of what you're trying to read. So if you're interested in improving your documentation, we also asked a really cool question. Couldn't quite fit it into today's presentation. We asked a really cool question. We said, what would make documentation better? And by the way, we've actually asked that question a couple times in a row or a couple of years in a row. So really, really interesting insights there. Head to the report, a little bit more than I can squeeze in today, but head to the report, check it out. Uh, super interesting uh, stuff and just very, you know, again, very clear uh, you know, we heard some pretty clear signals from the industry in terms of what would make documentation better. Awesome. Next question. Uh, Paul asks about API technologies. He's asking is trending up, steady or down? Yeah, so, uh, so that's a really good question. Um, we ask questions a little bit differently with different answer sets. So I don't want to, you know, I can't quite compare the two years, 2019 to 2020, because we changed some of the answer sets there a little bit. 
So I can't make it a, a definitive call. Um, obviously, you know, REST is pretty gosh darn established. Uh, you know, folks who've been in the industry for a long while are we're even more likely to cite REST. Uh, but we do see some other things, you know, kind of coming into play, including webhooks, uh, web sockets, you know, certainly even async API, even though it's, or excuse me, yeah. So, you know, kind of lots of things kind of coming into play. But, uh, but yeah, no, REST is still, at least, you know, kind of from our data and what people are telling us, the clear winner. Got it. So then last question, uh, Ismail asks, how are non-developers building APIs? Uh, or, or from that perspective, in the data that you collected, are non-developers building APIs or are they just interfacing with them? So that is a really good question. Um, and actually, we'll be looking at, uh, you know, kind of even providing some uh, other layers uh, to the data going into 2021. But uh, generally what we see uh, is that non-developers tend to not be building APIs, but more so consuming APIs. So, you know, what's really interesting is kind of tying that back to the earlier question around lack of documentation. You know, it's really hard to understand API documentation when you're not, you're not a developer necessarily and don't have certain skill sets that, you know, perhaps, you know, mostly API producers would expect out of API consumers. So, so yeah, so we see kind of more API consumers. And that's certainly kind of what some of our work around Postman is. How do we make uh, almost in some ways democratize uh, APIs even more? And how do we make it easier for non-developers to come on board and use and work with APIs? I think uh, you may have heard a little bit about Flow Runner, really exciting stuff coming around there, you know, around some of our no-code solution for running a number of requests. So look for more on that. Love it. So we, we are at time. I have to hop off. Awesome. I'm popping to another um, session for the economic benefits of uh, Postman. Rebecca, you're welcome to stay on and answer any additional questions. Um, also sounded like you're going to be at the, the booth. So look forward to yep. seeing you there. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, Rebecca, feel free to stay on for a little bit if, if needed. All right, cool, cool. Let me uh, let me stop sharing here. I'll try and hang on a little bit longer. So yeah, are there uh, kind of any questions? I'm checking out the Slido right now. Huge thanks to uh, Ian for doing that. Um, you know, are there any questions looking through here? Looks like we've got most of the lack of documentation uh, questions, but yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Really appreciate the uh, love, folks. Really, really enjoyed uh, kind of the conversation and whatnot. So yeah, so if you have a question that wasn't answered today, I'll be over in the booth in just a little bit and answer questions there as well as, you know, feel free to grab my email, Rebecca at postman.com. Email me with thoughts and ideas. Take care and thank you so much. Bye.